So you got lots of videos planned? Oh, I mean, it's just the same stuff, right? So it's like the bug bomb video, like how to prepare for a bug bomb. Is he planning videos there? Um, the results of that was what I streamed. And then like how to add pods and like benefits of Fido, how to dose Fido or tell Fido well, like good. Um, and then it's like the products, like the product reviews that I'm going to do for uh, Fallmat, Fall uh, Aquamax. Nice. So it's just like visual layout. So also when these companies ask, I can be like, oh, I'm expected to put the, the video out on this day. Well, that's good. Well, that's pretty planned out then. Hey, Royal Reaper. Yeah, hey, Paul. I'm... People hopping in? Yep. We've got Royal Reaper and Paul just joined us. What's going on, guys? What's happening? Mr. Infinite Aquatics over there is getting organized. What's his YouTube plans? No, life plans. Life, life plans. Life. Yeah. Life and interweb life. It's all life, right? <laughs> no, it's only life that matters, right? You cannot make that decision. It's sad. Okay. I like your yeah. rhino. Oh, your rhino whiteboard holder. <laughs> Royal awesome Reaper right says, there. "Hey, infamous." What's yep. going on, Reapers? What's going that's on? That's actually an animal. Is a rhino. A what animal? Rhino is my favorite animal in the entire world. Nice. I don't know. Fun actually... story. I have a really fun story about a rhino. Tell me I'm more. pretty jealous of Tell So, me. um, I have a friend, like, you know, Reef Dudes. I do a little bit of traveling if you look at my personal stuff. Yeah. I have a friend I travel with. His name is Casey. He's actually, like, a doctor. And he was doing one of, like, um, like, he was volunteering in Africa. Yeah. And um, they took him to a animal reserve. Well, they used to have a, a baby rhino there, and it like outgrew the entire reserve. So they let it free, but the rhino comes back all the time, right? This fool Casey, the rhino came back the time they were visiting, and this fool Casey ran up to the rhino, slapped it on its horn, and ran <laughs> behind. Wow. I was like, this is the most gangster thing I've ever heard. How are you gonna go up to a rhino? and slap that thing like it can't just like destroy your whole life so did he even notice or was he like Rah. well they, it's been around people since it was like a kid like a little okay. baby so i'm sure it noticed it definitely noticed but like, did he it's just he like whatever or was he like yeah what's up seymour oh he just came and dropped Hey Seymour, jump back in. Just mute the YouTube if you want to come on in. What's going on, guys? What's going on, Kruger's Reef? Reef community worldwide. Brands 1980. Steve, how are you guys all doing? We're all coming over? Sounds good. Hop on in, guys. Reef community worldwide. Brands. Hello. Hey Seymour, just mute your YouTube on yours. Because I can yeah, do the double echo. Perfect. I keep hearing myself as weird, it's like a trippy echo chamber. Hey Jake. Jake. Head, what's all that wrong? Hey Paul, how are you? I can't even turn my camera up on it, how would you do that? <laughs> Fancy, eh? <laughs> Wait, who's that guy with the, the beard? The Jake guy? Yeah. I recognize that guy, that's a nice beard, Jake. <laughs> you just hide Am I still there, have I gone yeah, you're still here. I've not got angles all over. Yeah, you are. Oh, here we are. You don't need to see my face. <laughs> so, Mr. Paul, so I finally I, I caved and I ordered a 240 volt adapter for this European ozone generator to yeah. try. Oh my god, it says Anthony. Not used to that. Yeah. Now we've got your. Uh, Name. <laughs> no, I'm talking about. <laughs> You're like, that's a fake name, too. That's my ninja cover. <laughs> so, Reef Dudes, you are going to be the guinea pig for Ozone, right? I sure am. I'm curious. I was actually going to try it, but then I kind of got talked out of it because they said, told me not to run it at 120 volts, even though it, for my five seconds I plugged it in, it sounded and looks like it's working, but. So I'll have the adapter Friday. Mike, 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 yeah, Mike Clarence runs it, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. 
he runs lots of it. Uh, so, but yeah, this darn European plug, 240 volt, slow me down. Slow me down. Slow me down, man. I was so excited to play with it the other day. I'm like a little kid in the candy store with my new toy, and then nothing. Like, no. <laughs> but that happens. So, this weekend is, is going down. Yeah. I saw your messages, Brett. So, uh, what does ozone does do in a tank? So, ozone will do a few things. One of the things it does, it will break down the organics in your water. So, it kind of acts similar to carbon. So, it'll break down the organics. So, it'll help keep your water clear. It'll get rid of all the yellowing in your water by breaking down all those little bits of organics that are doing. If you do a little bit of ozone, it can enhance skimming. If you do too much ozone, it can actually hurt your skimmer performance. Uh, what else do we got for benefits? I'm curious to see if it's going to raise my pH or not. I'm not 100% sure if it will, but ozone is technically has an extra oxygen ion on it, and it is kind of unstable. So what it does is that extra oxygen ion will break off, and it will attach to other organics, and then it will deteriorate them, oxidize them, and break them down. That's kind of how it works. So I'm kind of curious to see if it's actually going to work and reduce my, or increase my pH. So that's a bit of a mystery one, but we'll find out. Are you going to reduce the bubble scrubbing? No, nah, I'm only going to run it probably a couple hours at night time. Okay. I think All right. I was talking to Nick and Cruz and a few other people have done ozone and they suggested about three hours a night. So I'm probably just going to start with it very low concentration and just slowly raise it up and kind of see how that goes. Science class with reef deeds. Yep, so that's kind of my thoughts. So hopefully hopefully it works out well. Um, one more question. So yep. you have a port on your skimmer that you're going to insert the ozone directly into. How are you going to get it into the skimmer? All right, so I do, I'm just going to put it through one of the silencers on my protein skimmer silencer. So this, this is those two little nubs on the top. And I just put mm -hmm. some airline on one of them. And I'm going to hook that up to the ozone. So it's just gonna this is okay. gonna suck it in. Yeah. All right. Because I got the um, the the vertex has a port, uh, a ozone port. So okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I emailed the place I got my skimmer from, and they said it's rated for ozone. So that's why I kind of decided to give it a go and see what happens. I'm excited for you, man. Hopefully, I hope it's good. I know, like Michael does it, loves it, and I know lots of big places do it, love it. Um, some places do do it for sterilizing, but you need a lot of ozone to actually sterilize. So this one's going to be more for just helping clean up the organics. So hopefully, I don't know, I, I'm just hoping for that. My water's pretty clear already, so I'm still curious to see the difference, but that extra crystal clear water will be nice if it works. So that's for the most part. I know there is other potential benefits. Uh, the downside or risks is it can deteriorate plastics and other stuff like leaving out the sun type of thing so if your skimmer is not rated for it it can deteriorate it and shorten its life so you definitely want to make sure that whatever vessel you're using for that is ozone rated or some people just take an old whatever throw away skimmer and they'll run ozone inside of that so a couple of different or ways yellow. you can deal with it yellow thanks are you, brett are you going to be monitoring orp as you're doing um Yep, I do have an ORP probe in the tank, so I will keep an eye on it. I think I buggered up the calibration before I knew what I was doing with that 400 solution. So it's currently reading at about 199, 200, so it's probably higher than that, but really the number doesn't matter, you're just kind of watching the trends of it. So. I think it should be good. So have you any of you guys in the chat, have any of you guys ran Ozone before? No, I've never run it. No? So I'm kind of curious. It was one of those things. I I bought like one like the China kind of version, and it was pretty cheap. So check it out. What the heck's worth a try? Uh, have a question, guys. A good pump that can go up to 16 feet height, energy efficient. I have the Vector L1, and it's no good. Just a trickle. Really, the Vector won't handle 16 feet. I would have thought that would for sure. There's like the Red Dragons and a bunch of those fancy pricey pumps that would do it. Can't say I've ever tried to pump water that high though. What's going on, Jake? What's going on? 
Yeah, hanging out. What are you up to? Just working on some video. Nice. Posting a new one soon? Uh, yeah, actually, you know, the issue right now is like I don't know which one to work on next. Ah. And uh, I don't want to fall behind. That, that's a good problem to have if you have them all shot already. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I visit so many tanks every year, like, it's, uh, it's just always a shock to, to realize at the end of the year how many people's homes and, and stores I've been to. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I find the hard thing, though, is if I shoot a bunch of videos and I neglect them for a while, they kind of get fallen off to the side and I got to go through and try and find all my audio files and resync it up. And it's kinda Dude, you know what the hardest what? When you shoot a bunch of videos ahead of time, and then your editing style changes, <laughs> and it's almost like, oh, it's not how I like it anymore. <laughs> you just gotta roll with it, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm often uh, always excited to go see someplace new mm -hmm. and capture new content and new footage, but I always have to remind myself, like, oh man, you've got a huge back catalog to go work on, so <laughs> I always want to shoot, but I don't want to sit down and edit. <laughs> Yeah, like this is actually what I'm working on right now is my like video library, like planning the videos out, what needs to get done when, and life. I was You're thinking about that too, uh, trying to put together a schedule between now and Macna and see yeah. when I want which videos to come out. But uh, so you got the Jason Fox video, the Sanjay video. Mm -hmm. I want to put a lot of that around this. But I know this discussion. This discussion is about uh, Ozone, right? Yeah, um, it's loosely. Yeah. Have you ever used those on Jake? I mean, yeah, I, absolutely. Um, I can walk into a to a restaurant or, or a grocery store and smell <laughs> ozone like that because yeah. uh, I worked at aquarium stores in the late '90s and we had mm -hmm. ozone on everything and it was we had little like a skimmer like this big on a 600 gallon tank pumping a milligram of ozone. Yeah. Oh, sorry, a gram of ozone per oh, that's hour. That's a good chunk. Definitely get a head in that tank. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I mean, you can't really talk about ozone without talking about orb. Yep. You know, the, the, the number one, two, and three reason to use ozone is to raise your orb. Mm -hmm. And so my tank right now is currently set up to take ozone, mm -hmm. but my orb is writing 400 millivolts. So there's no room for me to add any ozone to the tank. Oh, no. So mine used to be, but now it's sitting around 200. Then that may have been me buggering up the calibration on it. Because before I, I knew I want to come better. back around. I don't... Uh, you know, with the APEC system, I know it's yeah. kind of like the only thing we have in town, but they're mm -hmm. trying to do it all, right? They're trying to do pH, they're trying to do, or like the other day you were doing like that pH calibration thing. Yeah. You know, if you have solutions from APEX, those came from somebody else and you don't really know uh, that. So long story short, I have more confidence in a Milwaukee dedicated mm -hmm. monitor than a do it all aquarium controller. Um, to include like a good ORP monitor. But um, uh, your ORP oftentimes can be messed up if you get a bubble inside. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure most Apex users know to uh, orient their probes horizontally or at an angle yeah. to keep those bubbles from, from forming. That's why they have those little holes underneath. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes if your ORP is, at, is writing 200 millivolts, if you can give that probe a shake, you might find that your micro bubbles have gathered underneath yeah, that never probe know. head. My theory was, uh, before I knew any better, I think I tried to use that Milwaukee 400 millivolts to calibrate it, which I know you're not supposed to do. So I think I likely buggered it up at some point, the calibration. I, I talked yeah, to... Yeah, I don't know. I just... I... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No. Um, I talked to Russ, and he said, just run through the calibration really fast, and I'll set it back to default, but it didn't change. So it might actually be really low. Hard to say. But for the most part, I was just going to use it for a trend and see if there's a big change in any direction. If it raises what it does. I mean, is there, is there, is there tank? I mean, ozone really, I don't really encourage anybody to use ozone mm -hmm. unless they really have an application in the sterilization mm -hmm. or heavy duty nasty fish tanks or yeah. really clearing your water on a large reef tank where adding carbon all the time would be expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not something I would advise people to casually use because you can wipe out your tank. Yeah, too much is dangerous. I was going to start, at least my thoughts were, this guy says it does 5 to 50 milligrams, so I was going to start really low and just slowly do it for an hour or two a night and just slowly bump it up and see what happens. Um, or what volume of a tank? Uh, it's about 120 gallons. Uh, I mean, it's, so, so, so the other issue is right now is that we're all using uh, needle wheel protein skimmers, yep. and these are, are much heavily biased towards um, air volume than mm -hmm. contact time. Uh, so, you know, all of our, almost everything we know about ozone has been from, you know, older protein skimmers, venturi-driven protein skimmers, air-driven protein skimmers that are tall, 
really fine levels and they prioritize their bias for contact time versus their volume. Mm -hmm. that, that's where the contact time issue kind of came out because we we're using ozone on the old school skimmers. So five to 10 milligrams for the medium wheel protein skimmer and 120 gallon tank, I really don't think you're gonna see that much, man. No, it can go up to no. 50. <laughs> 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 yeah. What's up, everybody? What up, Jake? Infamous. Yes, Bella. What up? Yes, Bella. Yep. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. If I've never used it. It's 100% new experiment for me, but it was cheap enough. I figure it's worth a little experimentation to see what happens. Yeah, well, I mean, if your if your orb doesn't move, either it's just just not the right setup, or mm -hmm. your orb probe is screwed. Yeah. Does your orb change throughout the day? Does it drop when you feed heavy? Here, let me. Pull it up and take a look. I have, I honestly don't pay much attention to it, so let me just. Oh come on, man! Next. You can't add up your tank and you don't pay attention to it. Well, I haven't had to yet. <laughs> it's fairly stable. Okay, so control. So let me log in. Come on, man! <laughs> <laughs> if there's a big line swinging one direction, I'll pay attention. But it's just for the most part, a little jumping around. Okay, here you go. So 199 to 214 is in the last. 180 to 217, so it hasn't been huge swings. Yeah. So it's for the most yeah, part pretty I don't know. stable. I, I, I would really advise people before they use ozone to crack open a book, you know, like the advanced, mm -hmm. uh, advanced, not advanced, the modern coral reef aquarium or the reef aquarium yep. and get your fundamentals down because modern experience with uh, ozone use in reef tanks is very, very limited. Mm -hmm. it's, just almost, it's almost like a public aquarium thing these days. Yep. Extra super clear. Not that either of these are an issue, but my water is fairly pretty clear anyways, but I'm just trying to see if I would get clear without using as much carbon, or the other part was I know it gets rid of any kind of odors and that type of stuff. You started using ozone? I haven't you started yet. Using? No, I'm waiting for that 240 volts things to show up Friday, so I've just been reading and watching other videos about it recently, just trying to learn more about it first. Yeah. I'll, I'll do it on the low side of caution anyways, just to see if it's even worth it or not. Yeah, I mean, definitely, you know, if your water's pretty clear, I mean, a little carbon will hold you over for a month, right? Yeah, Unless that's... you have a lot of algae or a scrubber or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't... Don't think it's worth it? be very careful about your ozone. I, right. I, you're not going to, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen with a needle <laughs> wheel skimmer. Like, this is fair. Contact time. If you wanted to have an effect, you'd probably have to throw 100 milligrams at it, but then you also risk just adding too much ozone to your tank. You know, yeah, little skimmers. I know, I know the manufacturers put that nipple on our uh, aspirator valves right there next to the air intake just for marketing. ozone. But, uh, it's not that. It's just you know, it's what is. It doesn't cost them anything to put that little yeah. ozone nipple on there. That doesn't mean that it's effective for the entire protein skimmer. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, you're talking me out of it, man. I don't know. We'll see. It's it's just so much easier and safer to add a cup of carbon once a month. Yeah. And and you know, ozone an ozone generator is not um, maintenance free. Mm. You know, it's gonna be fine. Obviously, it's gonna be perfect when you set it up. But as what a dust and stuff gets through there, um, it's gonna be less and less effective. It's just gonna be one more thing to service, and it's gonna be just something that takes away from your reef tank. Yeah, you know, so I would say that unless you, you know, have a ton of macroalgae, you're really relying on large nope. uh, algae scrubber, <laughs> yeah. or you have a ton of fish and you eat a lot, or you have a quarantine system for fish and you want to actually you know, get uh, uh, germicidal with it. Mm -hmm. um, just a little, you know, the benefits for us is just put a cup of carbon in. Okay, you know, it was much easier. No, so I don't, I'm not trying to hijack the conversation. No, no, this is a, fair. I've yeah. never used it. Literally. I have a lot of experience with it. Yeah. And I'm not using it on my tank. Okay. Literally, it was and, $45. And, so I'm like, yeah, what the I hell? Nice ozonizer. I have an ozonizer. Yeah. And I, I had intention to set it up. But because I'm watching my ORP and my ORP is riding high, I'm like, nah, I'll need it. So if your ORP was, say, 200 like mine is, would you consider it? I don't think your orb is 200. 250 is kind of a uh, really, really low. If your yeah, orb so is 200, correct. your reef is dying. And it's thriving, so yeah, my probe's totally buggered. The calibration is. Like 300 millivolts is usually what a decent, healthy reef might run mm -hmm. at. But I don't feed my fish that much. I feed them really lightly, really 
airy food like pellets and, and flake foods. I don't have a lot of oils going in the tank. Mm -hmm. um, so mine fluctuates from like 350 to 400. And I get okay. nervous <laughs> when mine gets up to like really? 410, 420, because I'm like, well, you know, where's it going to stop? If it gets <laughs> any higher, it's just going to start oxidizing tissue. Yeah. So with I feed a lot in my tank. Like I put in like a sushi sized chunk of nori every day. I do I do like my auto feeder dumps in some PE mice pellets in the afternoon and I usually feed a chunk of frozen food at night. I mean it's clear that you like to play with toys. I mean if you want to play but with toys, pretty much. Go, yeah, go for it. But uh yeah, I know. I'm pretty sure we could have this conversation six months down the road yeah. and they'd be like, uh, I didn't really see any impact. That's fair. Who knows if I'll keep it long term? I'll definitely play with it for a couple of weeks and see what happens. But then who knows what'll happen after that? This product, uh, Frank the Tank. You need help from an expert. What's your question, Frank? I need to find so that Kwanzaa whatever solution actually calibrate my work one day. Ah, either way, it'll be fun to play with. So what's going on in the chat? This tank's looking good, Sabella. What's up? My tank's, bad, I was doing something. What's up? Tank's looking good. <laughs> Thank you. It's yeah, perfect. it's all right. It's nice and colorful. Yep. Yep. I want to get more Qu fish. Quinn Hydrine. Thank you. That's what it's called. Yeah, that stuff's expensive for what it is, but. Nice a can garden in the bottom. Yeah, thanks for the ORP import, Jake. I've literally never touched it in my life, so I appreciate all the experience on it. I mean, but to me, Amazon is complicated. Oh, it definitely I think it's is. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm terrible because I just like to experiment. Yeah. All the things like Jake, Jake comes at it with a bunch of experience. Like mm -hmm. you should take his advice and like understand that he does come from all that. Oh, exactly. No, I appreciate like, hearing all that. So, like he said, like he's like, do what you're gonna do. You like to tinker, tinker. Pretty much. A little bit of it. Who knows yeah. if I'll keep it long term or if there'll be much of a difference? But I'm sure I'll play with it for at least a couple weeks, anyways. Uh, so what would Frank say? My flame angel, after a week in quarantine, it stopped eating. He was eating like a pig. I do water change every day, 10%. Nitrates are high, around 40. Any advice? Uh, to get rid of those nitrates, you could do a bit higher of a water change. What's your... What are you feeding him? You could try doing, like, I find PE mice is something that almost everything eats in the tank. I don't know if you're just feeding pellets, but you can try doing frozen or different foods to see if you can entice it to eat. Oh, accurate or breeding before playing with O3. Ooh, in my life organized, baby. Yeah. So organized. Yeah. Yeah. I'll um I'll bust open that or 400 calibration solution. I think I sell the packet and I'll test it later and see how far it's off. The effects of micro bubbles on ARP. Well, I've been running micro bubbles for a couple of months now. I could just turn them off and see if it changes too. Leave them off for a few days. But yeah, no, I'll check my with that 400 millivolt solution tonight and see how far my ARP is off. Give it give a bit of idea, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you, Anthony. <laughs> right, I'll be back in a minute. Uh, some kids coming to buy bar beers from me. Sounds good. All right. <clears throat> Edmund Alnumi. Hello. All right. So I guess my first order of business is get that orb calibrated or at least figure out if it's accurate. On tonight's yeah, list. Man. Yeti. Like it's tank. Yeah, yeah. Pretty yeah, short chain. Uh, uh, question, not sure. Every time I run GFO and carbon in the reactor, my alkalinity drops. Mm. 
I don't not I don't know of any effect on alkalinity from a carbon reactor or GFO. As far as I know, there's no relation. I don't know if anyone else has any ideas on that one. Get a link. Yeah, I'll drop a link. GFO dropping elk. Huh. I have not heard of that one. That's new to me. Okay, so Jake, you're saying it should be pretty much instant. Where's my apex? Hey, Frank. What's going on, people? How's it going? What's going on? Who's that? Frank? Frank. What's up, man? So what's happening, Frank? Okay, let me explain you what is going on in my tank. Okay. Let me flip the camera, see if I can do this. Okay, this is one of my quarantine tanks where I have uh, brass. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see that. Yep, I can see it. Yeah. yeah, you can see the flame. It looks pretty healthy, by the way. And I have a Royal Brahma somewhere right there. Mm -hmm. They have been there for a week and a half. Everybody's eating fine, but the angel stopped eating like uh, two or three days ago. And what are you feeding him? I'm feeling a lot of different stuff, mm -hmm. and nothing is working. Flakes, um, my seeds, I'm feeding the rot food too. Yeah, usually if they're not eating, it's usually a stress-based thing. So it, oh, okay. Like you could try, you know, dimming the lights or just not being around the tank as much, or I don't know if you have any live foods you can try and entice them. But gen generally, for me, I always just find frozen foods always my backup plan. No, oh, okay. And then I have this, another quarantine, but this one has egg a uh, few weeks ago. I mean, already been five weeks and a half. Mm -hmm. And the main display is right here, mm -hmm. and it's empty right now. <laughs> so did, you, did you take all your fish out to... I used to have it back on Sunday. It will be six weeks. Mm -hmm. Because they are suffering a lot because of the nitrate. So Now, did you take them all of your tank to quarantine them? Yes. All okay. the fish are in quarantine. My okay. main display is empty. Okay. No fish. Now, do they still have acre issues or are they getting better? No, no, no. They, I put uh, cupramine okay. for three weeks. Yep. I removed the cupramine already two weeks and a half, and they are perfect. So okay. I don't see any sign of uh, ick. Okay, excellent. So no. should I keep feeding this guy and doing water change the same way I'm doing it? I mean, if he doesn't have any illnesses or anything, I'd almost put him in the tank, and I think he'd probably be fine. Yeah, he, he has nothing. I mean, you cannot see even on his spot or anything in his yeah. skin. Because he's likely stressed, I'm guessing, that he's likely stressed out just from, you know, being in the quarantine tank and once he settles into a house. Because stress is one of the biggest things, right? Even sometimes quarantine or moving fish around too much will stress them out and can make things worse versus just leaving them alone and letting them do their thing. Do you think we'll be, I mean, put all together when these fish, I mean, the, the egg ones that I don't have, I put them back and then... At the same day, put this one. It's gonna be two weeks for them in quarantine. Um, that one's up to you. Um, I'm terrible on, for advice on this part because I normally haven't really quarantined. I just stare at the fish at the store for half an hour and make sure he looks all good, and eating, and doesn't have any spots, all that type of stuff. Uh huh. So that's kind of when when I do it. But I mean, it is so basically, you don't quarantine, right? I, you should. <laughs> I don't, but I, but yes, you should. I've lucked out and haven't really had any no. issues, but okay. But it is a it is definitely Thank a good so idea to do it. Mm -hmm. After you move the other fish to the display, do you want to maybe move him over to the quarantine tank for a day or so, having him by himself? Maybe that'll entice him to eat. Yeah. 
Um, Philip in the chat was saying he has to leave the main display I think for 76 days to make sure the ick it is out. So I think that's saying that you need to... Depends how long they've been out of the tank. It could still be in your tank and hasn't died off. But at the same time, I think, you know, every tank pretty much has it. It's just if the fish is stressed or type of stuff, they'll bring it out. But to be honest, I've been pretty lucky and really haven't had any too many issues, so I haven't dealt a ton with it. So if, if any of you guys have more experience on that, feel free to pipe in. What's going on, Bubba? All right, so I'm gonna check now. So, copper will destroy corals. Um, I know inverts, all that type of stuff, will have a negative effect. For sure. Coral, I'm not too sure. I would always avoid putting it. I would never put it in my display, though. Alright, so just checking. So, Jake, you're asking earlier about micro bubbles effect on ARP. So, my micro bubbles turn on at 2200 and they turn off at 1030 in the morning. So, 2200. So there, it's almost looking like it's dropping. It raises back up. Yeah, it doesn't. Honestly, it doesn't look like it has a huge difference on it. Let's try a different day. It does look like it raises a little bit. So till ten. Yeah, no, it does look like. Okay, so it does look like it does raise it a bit. Not huge, but small jump. Yeah, no problem, Frank. Let me know if you have any other questions on that. Uh, Johnny K. In some cases, copper-treated water ended up in my main tank on accident. Uh, a small amount is probably not going to be a huge thing, but large amounts of copper can definitely do damage in a reef tank, so you do want to avoid that whenever you can. Hey, Steve. Hey, Bubba. How you doing? Pretty good. How are you doing? Good, good. Excellent. Thanks for hosting the, the chat again. Oh, no problem. Look forward to it. Every Wednesday. Let's I'm try try, it. I'm, I'm trying to be consistent every Wednesday at the same time, so. <laughs> but yeah, like um, Narcosis is saying in the chat, uh, copper is detrimental to inverts, so any shrimp in your tank, any hermit crabs, any of those type of guys, so it's so destroyed nice. by it. So those are the guys that will really be impacted. So what's going on everybody else in the hangouts? Anything new and exciting going on in your life today? Anything else in the reefing world? Hey yo, how do you like your new skimmer, buddy? Oh, I'm just testing out the little guy. <laughs> but it's tiny in comparison. It's funny. When I um when I was putting it together, the little pump just like fits in my hand like nothing. It's just like a little baby. But <laughs> It's, it's a little version. I have to do a review on it, so I'm letting it, I turned off mine and letting it run in the tank for a few weeks to yeah. give it a proper test. What are you running for a skimmer? It's a it's a stock in the uh, Red Sea Max Nano, the stock one. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. It's a, it's a, I like the way it works. It's a good the little skimmer, I'll be honest with you. The older ones were, were garbage. Oh really? Is the new one not bad? No, it's good. It's, I like it a lot. Excellent. Yeah. So, oh, so what are the other things with or supposedly it gets sort of any of that kind of oceany little bit of fishy smell, which carbon carbon does that too. So I'm kind of curious to see if that makes a any noticeable difference. I'm gonna change the subject a minute. It's thirty nine. Thirty nine. What? Ah. Oh. <laughs> What was that? One hundred percent. One 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 hundred percent. Paul's been researching. Ah. Uh, uh, Rico. <laughs> nice. <laughs> one 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 like fill me in. One hundred percent. What? <laughs> right. Hang on. This was. 
I can find out everything. <laughs> I've, even found, I've even found his weight. <laughs> wow. Hey, Barry Reese. Wait, wait, is, you're <laughs> researching on Rico right now? <laughs> yeah, he's been researching him for about an hour now. <laughs> right, hang on. So in April, so May, June, <laughs> July, so he would have been. Oh, bear with me. So he was 37 in April, so that's April, May, June, July. So in July, he would have been. He's 40. Because he would have been 38 in that month. Eight. Yeah, he's 40. He's 40. He's 40 today, Rico. Wow. He's 40? Oh, he's 40 today. He's 40 today. And here I was flattering him with 29. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's actually a big birthday for him. It is a big one. Yeah, it is. Nice. Hey, JMFBA subscribed. Thank you, sir, if you're in the chat. Always appreciated. How was the reactor doing, Death up the shit reactor? Yeah, it's doing really good, actually. Um, yeah, no, yeah. I put a, I put the tiniest amount in last time I emptied it, which is about a week ago, and I'd say it's probably about seventy percent full now. Wow, that's phenomenal. So hopefully. So hopefully good. Um, I am curious to order some of the red and blue quote unquote grow light LEDs right. and see if that makes a difference. This is on my to-do list. So gotcha. probably try that in the next few weeks. Probably give it one more round and empty it and try that. Yeah, it's interesting, yeah. yeah. What's Frank got going on there? Oh yeah, look at that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got the shadow reactor and the fuse. Oh, yeah. Double timing it. Double timing wow, it, Frank. Nice. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Hey, how often do you clean the sump? Who's that question to? Uh, Frank. Frank, how often do you clean your sump? No, no. My question is, how often do you guys clean your sump? Oh, me? Ah. I... Frequently, actually. It, whenever I do a water change, if there's any little detritus on the bottom, I just suck that out as I'm going. So no. usually I'll just do that at first, but that's usually about the extent of my cleaning. I haven't cleaned mine because my nitrates are pretty much like zero in my main display. Yep. So even though I have a bunch of uh, crab in, at the bottom of the stone, so... Mm -hmm. It, it, honestly, it's probably better to leave it natural. I do mind just to make it look pretty, just if there's any like obvious stuff. No, oh, okay. If, if you don't have any nitrate issues and there's no kind of buildup that's causing an issue, then it's not really an issue. Other than that, it's just aesthetics. Got it. Yeah. Thank you again, man. Oh, and no problem. Narcosis, what were you talking about? Oxidization reaction chamber. Fill me in. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's see. So is that for ozone, or what are you running through that? Hey, Narcosis. What's up, buddy? Hey. How you doing? There it is. Oh, that's that uh, deoxidation reactor. Wow. Yep. So are you pumping ozone and just bubbling inside, or what do you... Explain that to me. All right. So, uh, nobody taught us at home. I'm a professional. <laughs> That's quite right. <laughs> yeah. We need the, the Mythbusters thing at the so, beginning of all the videos. Uh, this is a standard calcium right here, and uh, I am pumping my trusty <laughs> friend in here called Hydrogen Peroxide. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, Peroxide. Yep. Yeah. I'll be darned. I am. I have a buddy that doses that to his tank on a, a daily basis. So, uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm dosing that into this chamber, and I am dosing a catalyst in there too, which is causing it to materialize into oxygen and hydrogen. So what are you dosing for a catalyst? Because I know it will oxygenate on its own if you put it in salt water. Potatoes. What was that, sorry? Potatoes. Potatoes. 
Hmm. Interesting. So, wow. So, uh, there is a enzyme inside of potatoes that will make hydrogen peroxide instant. So I am dosing it into that chamber, which is coming out of the line. Mm -hmm. Slowly, slowly, to boost up the pH in my system and also kill off algae and uh, I guess you would say like uh, nuisance bacteria. Yep. So uh, I am testing it to see if it will dose uh, 100% oxygen without carbon dioxide and it will raise my fuel. Huh. How is it, wow. how's it looking so far? Did you just set this up or has it been an ongoing experiment for a while? Uh, I just set it up yesterday. Keep me updated. I'm curious on this. So, uh, basically, I was promising everybody I would set it up. <laughs> I could do it. Uh, I'm kind of like you, you know? I like to test. Yeah. I like to find out what it's going to do, how it's going to do it. <laughs> yeah. So I have it set up there. And I kind of set it up kind of janky. I just set it up directly in front of my tank. Just for testing purposes. It will move later after testing with people. So do you legitly just have like a potato inside of there and then you inject peroxide? Yes. Ah, nice. I'm really curious to see what happens with that. I've never heard yeah. of or considered that before. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun to experiment, though, isn't it? It's like a science project. Yeah, it fills my tank. That's <laughs> <laughs> yep. stuff like that. So I mean, of course, you know, you always gotta. Mm hmm but yeah, as long as nothing kills the corals and it's all fair game for experiments. As long as the corals and fish are okay. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, it is only hydrogen and oxygen, so most likely it should not do anything. Yeah, you're probably I don't know if there's any negative effects from my potato enzymes and they're breaking down the tank, but yeah, the peroxide I know. I've used it to spot kill like hair algae and other types of allergies before, just give it a little shot of peroxide, and that works. Yeah. And then my one buddy, I know he has it on his doser, and he doses a little bit every day, and he swears it prevents any algae. But I've only ever used it to spot treat, kill stuff. What uh, what what kind is he dosing? Um, I just peroxide. I'll double check with him, but I'm pretty sure it's just hydrogen peroxide. Is, is he dosing the three percent, the thirty-five percent, fifty percent, food grade, lab grade? Let me send him a text message and see if he answers. What percentage are you dosing? I'm about to die, of course. <laughs> Had it on all day at work. Ah, uh, happens. Potato, 3%. Okay, yeah, so I'll see for a yeah, second. I know. Never would have thought to use potato. Although people use I, sugar, I, I, vinegar. Was talking about it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you played with an ozone generator narcosis? Oh, might have lost him. <laughs> so yeah, who knows? Potatoes and reef tanks, eh? Looking at So how much ozone, or sorry, um, peroxide do you actually go through with that? Like, do you use quite a bit of it, or is it not bad? Ah, we lost him. Yeah. Okay, hey, so how much peroxide do you actually dose through it? Uh, I'm dosing uh, 10 milliliters, and I'm only dosing it uh, at night time between 1 and 10 in the morning. Okay. Uh, basically, that is... My lights are off. Yep. Oh, well, yeah, definitely keep us updated. I'm curious on that one.
So who else? Had... With, so you're trying to inject, like, pure oxygen, or just, rather than, are you doing that so it's pressurized, or are you doing it to try and get a higher oxygen concentration? Uh, it is a higher oxygen concentration without carbon dioxide, so it's basically, uh, straight, it's, it's, it's the, it is, uh, 80% uh, hydrogen, 20% oxygen. Okay. So, it doesn't have any carbon dioxide, so basically... Uh, carbon dioxide uh, helps lower your pH. So yep. if you're dosing oxygen, or if uh, you are using your you know normal like air pump, mm -hmm. you are putting in oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. So I want to try to eliminate the carbon dioxide to raise the pH instead of like raising it a little. It'll raise it a lot. You know. Okay. Yeah, no, that's interesting. I like all these experiments. Definitely keep me updated on it. Uh, Bub is asking, does he drill small holes in the potato, or how does he infuse it? You just throw in a whole one, or juice. chop it up? Potato juice? Yeah, potato juice. Okay, nice. I, I've actually never heard of potato juice. I mean, juice. you pretty much just take the potato and stick it in the blender. Okay, fair enough. Okay. So does any of it make its way into your tank, or is it somehow blocked off like a sponge or something? Keep it contained? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, yeah. well, one more time. Do you have a sponge or something in there to like stop it from any potato making your way to the tank? Feeding the fish and corals? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. What's that? Carbon source? Okay. Isn't potato juice vodka? <laughs> Fermented potatoes can become vodka. Yeah. <laughs> Fermented and distilled. <laughs> right, right. That's funny. <laughs> and yet, in the end, it's somehow like this convoluted way of vodka dosing. Hey, you never know. Maybe it is essentially carbon dosing to an extent. Right, right, right. Could be just a different way to who knows, right? I don't know. That's the fun about the hobby. There's so many ways to experiment, try different things, and just kind of learn and see what happens. You talking yeah. about the potato? Yep. Yeah, the uh, oxidation yeah. reaction. This potato breaks down and is a carb, starch carb breaks down into sugar. People sugar dose. Sugar is a carbon source. I bet you you're basically carbon dosing at the same time. Yeah. You Narcosis, you should keep an eye on your nitrates and phosphates and stuff and see if it makes a difference. It wouldn't surprise me if it did. Just being silly. Yeah, we are too a bit, but there might be a little bit of serious truth yeah. to it. Half jokey and half curious. Kind of in the middle. I'm all curious, man. I'm very curious about that. I know. Yeah. But like a lot of these things, like um, what's the other one that people are using for Red Cross, that flucons and all and all that stuff? Like, how do people think to use this stuff in the first place? To exactly, we're gonna do deworming stuff, and all the analogy has gone. Like sometimes experiment right, right. so it brings out these crazy random cures, right? So you never know. People like you guys, y'all tinker. People like to tinker, the ones that come up with this stuff. <laughs> Love I to just tinker. sit here and wait for the response. Yeah. You just you just wait for it to figure it out. Make sure a big bunch of people pass and you're like, alright, I'm in. Yeah. It's like, That's... oh shit, that dude can't crash. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for telling me what not to do. <laughs> Drop the link if anyone else wants to jump in. Seriously, might be onto something. It's how the stuff gets discovered. Exactly, Philip. Never know. Yeah, Phil. Definitely. So I'm still got for new stuff. Hmm. Ozone's my only really new experiment lately. 
playing with that skimmer. I got one of those new quiet pump things, whatever. It's the next thing I gotta test out. What am I drinking? Is this ginger ale? One sec. That's my other latest toy. I still gotta do a little unboxing video and play with this. Kind of see how that does on the tank. <laughs> Coral box quite. I haven't even opened the box yet. Live stream exclusive. Um, yeah, sneaking one in. <laughs> That's a big controller. That thing. <laughs> yeah, it has a little screen on it. Looks kind of cool. Kind of a beefy looking pump. There you go. Sneak peek at the Coral Box Quiet Pump. Just throw in the tank later and see how it does. QP9. No nope, reef dudes. He is. Check out my new uh, temporary chater reactor. Nice. Oh, good. You're on board, brother. Nice, Seymour. Looking good. Would you so use for? I took. I took the Z. I took the Z. So started dismantling the Zeovit stuff today. Mm -hmm. um, did a lot of it last night. Um, took the zeolites. I've been reducing the amount of zeolites. Finally removed the last of it last night. My chalices died today. No. Oh, what? Your chalices died? Yeah. You have no idea why? Well, well, the last one is on its last leg. I have no idea. I didn't. All I did was I didn't even start doing the supplements yet. I didn't even start reducing the supplements yet. I just um, I just took the zeolites off. So. Um, I got the Triton test. I think I was showing it on another live stream. So. Mm -hmm. Um, phosphates are high, so um, this is sort of like um, you know some way to reduce phosphates while I get you know work on a permanent algae reactor thingy. So that's just a standard Aquamax reactor. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think you sent me the lights you used. I don't know. I think when I when I got this and turned it on today, I thought it was purple, but it wasn't. But I had already had to put it on the reactor, so it was too late to change it. So mm -hmm. I thought I thought you had sent me the link or told me the exact one you use, and I thought that's what I was buying. But no, well, no, I don't. White? No, mine are warm white right now. Um, oh, I have a warm. White. Yeah, I ha it's not cool white. It's warm white. Yours look yellowy, so they do look warm white. Um, you do have a lot of the red from those spectrums mixed in with the warm white. So, in theory, they should be a huge difference in them, too. I haven't ran strictly just the ready purple ones yet, which is the red and blue ones. I am curious to try it, see if it does make a difference, but the ones that I'm doing right now are just the warm white. So, you probably do have the same ones. All right. All right. That's good to know. I had so, it. it's there. It's a weird connection because it's right in front of the skimmer. Mm -hmm. Uh... I have to elevate it a little because it, even though the lights say waterproof, I didn't, you know, trust them to be submerged. So maybe yeah. it's splash proof, not submerged proof. So I'm in the same um, boat. But, I didn't trust putting in the water. So combined with my regular refugium, hopefully that can, um, you know, help reduce PO4. But my regular refugium, I just realized as I was installing this that half the LEDs are out. I don't know why. <laughs> that might do so, it. Oh boy, oh, lucky happening, bro. What, what are you I using know. for light on it? Uh, it's a... Man, it's... I, I don't remember, but it's a, like a refugium light I bought off of Amazon. Okay. I don't remember the brand, um, but it's pretty much warm white. 6700K or something. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. That's the one I'm using, 6700. Yeah, so it half the LEDs are out. Mm -hmm. I can get in closer. You can see half the LEDs are out. So with a sale yesterday and some points I saved up, I got a one of the one of those um under waterproof Tunzi LEDs. Yeah. So that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a couple of those on for the regular refugium. That should be a lot of light. Nice. And you know, get a permanent shader reactor reactor um somewhere. Okay. And uh hopefully the Chato reactor, reactor and a small refugium should be enough to keep nutrients low. Nice. Hopefully. 
That's kind of funky. I'm just looking up that t Tinsy one, the full spectrum light waterproof one. Not the one for about sixty bucks. Not the one for a hundred bucks. The okay. one for sixty. Bucks. Okay. It says it's refutable. Yeah. Skimmer's working good. Excellent. That's, that, that, that's your new one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a new one. What model is that, Seymour? It's the Vertex Omega 180i. Okay, nice. Happy with it? Yeah, happy with it. Yep, absolutely. Someone mentioned today that another change I made is, you know with Zeovit, you, you, you're not supposed to run carbon in a reactor. So I, you, you run carbon in a bag. Mm -hmm. And you have to use, you know, KZ special carbon. So I don't think that was as effective because when I tested, you know, my water using like the white bucket, it was yellow. Mm -hmm. So yesterday I put, you know, after I was finished taking the zeolites out, I put, you know, like some ROX 0 0.8 carbon in a reactor and, you know, it probably cleared the water up. So I wonder if the chalices were just blasted with more light because of, you know, just better water quality today. It definitely can make a big difference. I know um, just adding carbon can be up as, you know, 20% of the improvement on par. Yeah, so I, I, just, I wonder if they just got, because it's only the chalices. I don't think that would have killed them, though. How many did you have die? Three. All, I got them at Reef of Palooza, man, so I was happy. Mm -hmm. That sucks. It does. Yep. It um, does. It does. But other yeah. than that, man, can't complain. Tank is looking good. Excellent. That's always good. I I told you I got a jawbreaker mushroom. Traded an old MP10 for one. Like it's an orange one. I don't know if you can see it. This is on a this is a laptop photo, so it's on a frag rack somewhere. So I got a nice bright orange one. So I'm excited about and, that. And you're yeah. uh, using those LEDs, right? Uh, oh, Radeon. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What do you what? You still got them at uh, 50, 60 percent, or did you turn them down? Yeah, got them at 50 percent. Um, I recently nice. changed again, thanks to Reef Dudes. I changed to the SPS AB, um, more bluer because I always ran my lights white. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I'm not making any changes now. I'm going to give it a couple months on, you know, adjusting to this new blue spectrum mm -hmm. before I change anything else. But yeah, I think, I think, you know, maximum throughout the day, it's about 60%. Okay. Uh, have you checked your par levels at all? No, no par levels. I have a Senai somewhere, but nah, I haven't checked par levels. All right. Uh, hey, read, I hey, have read. a friend that is on my uh, on my Reef Society site mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she lives well I used to go by her house a whole lot and look at her tank because I was really fascinated you know with the I tank was, yeah I was really fascinated you know she had like I don't know 300 something different kind of Montes wow. and they were like all wow. over her tank and for some reason she listened to some other friend that told her to turn her Radions, or her, her one radion, that was maybe 18 inches off the water, mm -hmm. or even higher off the water. So, 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 she had it about 18 inches up. Told her to turn it from 35 percent to 50 something. She had it on like 53 or 54, mm -hmm. and it literally burnt her whole entire SBS tank up. Well, oh yeah, you got to acclimate that over a couple of weeks. That's, you can't just flick yeah. it. That could be dangerous. Think about, the thing about Radeon, they make it so easy because the acclimation, I think the maximum they'll do is six weeks. Yeah. But the acclimation feature makes it so easy. Oh, yeah. yeah. One checkbox, you're done. Yeah. Um, hey, the one thing about running your tank this blue, I didn't even notice that my regular red plating Monty is actually multicolored. <laughs> like, it has polyps. <laughs> I didn't even know the thing had polyps. Don't you love you all that extra color? It. Yeah, well, it's it's now it has it's purple. It's it has purple polyps on it that are out. I I didn't know mm -hmm. that you know Montipora like regular plating Montipora Capricorn is had polyps. Oh yeah, no, definitely. I got one that has like red polyps, another one with blue polyps. I got a few different ones. It's it's neat all the I don't know. For me, I love all the colors. So yeah, so I, I'm loving the blue. Um, I mean, now it's it's really blue because it's going down, but I'm loving 
the new, you know, one in my tank blower. The nice. first couple of days, it took a, you know, my wife mm -hmm. and I took a couple, it took a while to get used to just the tank being that blue, mm -hmm. but I, I think I like it. Oh, that's, that's good to hear. Ramp down time. Yeah. yeah, bubble tip and enemies yeah. split again, so now there's like seven, <laughs> so Dave, if you're you back, you back up to seven, huh? <laughs> So Dave, if you're listening, Dave's Nano Tank from New Jersey, man, I got bubble tips for you, brother. If you have 300 monsters, you're obviously having success. Why change the lighting position or intensity? No, I think he was just saying after running carbon and stuff, it sucked a lot of the yellow out of the water, so it increased the intensity and par. Yeah, so... I well, Actually, what of... BRS videos I watched the other day, they threw the ozone in a bucket of water, and I think they said there's a 20% jump in par from it getting rid of all the yellows in the water. So it was fairly really? substantial. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, I've seen that video too. Yeah. All I've been doing is watching ozone videos this week. Johnny Case, I still don't take a bubble tip. All, all these flags <laughs> my wife bought from Reef Palooza, I still have nowhere to put them. <laughs> nice. Hey, so. but, uh, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, my wife came down here and started going, trying to give me hugs and stuff. So, <laughs> but uh, but but yeah. So uh, she jacked them up over the course of like two months, from thirty-five to fifty. Over two months. And then, like, right as it hit fifty. Is like every week after that, she just kept having like a coil loss, a coil uh. loss. So she checked her parameters, she started checking everything, and then uh, she was like, "Hey, you know, just just come over and see if you see anything." And like basically, as soon as I got there, I was like, "What do you have those lights on?" She's like, "I don't know, like forty something." And I'm like, "Hey, show me the profile, cause that looks pretty bright to me." Yeah. And so she showed me her profile, and she had them like on fifty percent. I only run mine like, at 45 on my tank. Yeah, she had them at like 50%, and I'm like, well, turn those down right now to like 30%. So she turned them down to 30%, and within like the next two days, everything, you know, just started bringing out its polyps and started coming back, and, you know, some of the stuff that was stripping away and starting to get lost started coming back. Just bleaching the tank, so, eh? Yeah, I mean, basically, she was burning everything, so... Yep, you're definitely safer being less light than too much. So, what I am going to do is, like like the other Zeo supplements, so what I did is, instead of dosing the blue bottles every day, I used the tablets. So, I don't know if you guys can see the tablets. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to leave the tablets in for another week or so. What are those, sorry? Those are, so instead of, so the Zeovid has a bunch of different, um, you know, supplements you can dose. Mm -hmm. You know, little blue bottles, potassium, iron. So instead of dosing those, you can buy these medical grade tablets. Huh. Put them in and they last up to four months. Nice. So yeah, that's it, convenient, of, eh? uh, Yeah, so, it, yeah, so I, listen, man, if, if, you, if you do that, plus with the amino acids, you're doing like, you could be doing six, seven, eight th different things a week. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, I, you know me, I try to automate or simplify everything as much as possible. So yeah. these were way more expensive. But um, these tablets, yeah, you put them in and you replace them about three to four months. You know, the one of the tablets, one of the supplements, I could put it, you could dilute it and put it on a dosing pump. Mm -hmm. So I try to simplify the system as much as possible. But now that my chalice has died, I think I'm going to leave these in a little bit, you know, longer. A couple more days before I um, um, put the Triton on the dosing pumps. Now, you got your test results back today, right? Yep. We, were, we were looking at earlier from your mm -hmm. Triton test. Yep. Now, now was what you have that was really high? Like, is it anything that's coming from those tablets or other stuff? Or was that from stuff no, from previous? No, phosphate's really high. Yep. Um, I think it said um, one of the supplements was high, but it said it's probably caused by running regular GFO and zeolites. And, you know, of course, I was running zeolite. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that's probably from that. And then the other thing, my phosphates. Because the Triton me measures both the inorganic and the organic phosphates, and both for me were just off the charts. Yeah. So, you know, 
yeah, that's one of the reasons I kind of just hooked up the algae reactor today to try to tackle. Because I, I saw your video when, you know, after you put yours on, you had, um, you know, a pretty dramatic phosphate reduction over the course of a week or two. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm kind of looking, you know, at the same boat. But what I got to say, man, the tank looks healthy. I have no algae at all. Yeah. Um, in the in the little refugium I have, I you know the chato grows, but I get some really nasty, like I don't even know what it is. All different. It's like a rainbow colored algae in there, but I'd rather it be there than in the display tank. I get no algae in yeah. the display tank. At all. No, that person. Yeah. So, um, I'm we've been kind of, like talking about this the other day in the sense of at this point when you have like a well thought out tank, like you see more, like your tank is obviously beautiful, right? At this point, like when we just like tried it and like all these things, we're really not trying to see like this huge difference. At least in my opinion, at this point, when you really think your tank out, you're really competing for just like that small, that extra ten percent. Because look yeah. at your tank; it's stunning, right? Your your tank is stunning. You honestly do not need to test it. Like test the try. And at that point, we're like nitpicking and we're competing for that slight advantage just to stack things in our favor. Because at the end of the day, this this hobby really is a lot of chance, a lot of planning, right? But there is a little bit of chance, right? That something can go wrong. And it's about stacking as much in your favor as possible. I'll tell you why I decided to do Triton is the no water changes that really kind of intrigues me. Um, uh -huh. Because with Zeovit, all that you do with Zeovit the thing I can tell you about Zeovit is that it's it works because my I, I had good growth, I had low nutrients with vodka and vinegar, but my colors were a little bit faded. So with Zeovit, you get a stunning tanks with lots of colors, but you still needed to do a little bit of water changes, and you had to do so many supplements that if I wasn't here, like someone would have to come in and see like you know um, I mean I already packed them up because I'm trying to give away the Zeovit stuff, but. It's like a bunch of different little bottles that someone has two times a week, I'll three times. Huh? <laughs> and you, you know, um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm working on a video now that shows how involved the water changes for me. You know, in an apartment where I gotta pull in the blue yeah. trash can off the off the fire escape. You know, do it when the kids are going to bed. I don't have a place for my roadie, so. Yeah. It was a prospect of no water change, little to no water changes that really intrigued me with Zeo. Mm -hmm. I probably could have done it with another system, I know, but you know, again, it's yeah, it's a it, part of it is experimenting, but the no water changes really is kind of what the selling um, feature of it all. Yeah, that's that's what's intriguing. Mm -hmm. And um, I, when I was at Reefa Palooza, you know, Ryan from BRS, he says he says they're moving their tanks. Like the big BRS 160, so move it to Triton because he said the prospect of no water changes is intriguing. So yeah, um, I did ask him when that video is coming out. He said it won't be for a couple of months. So testing yeah, it all out. I first. actually um, I'm thinking about doing Triton mostly because everything. If you look at like my personal Instagram, you'll see like I travel a lot, so much, and one thing I realize is like the more there is to do the less likely someone's gonna do. So mm -hmm. I'm really thinking about doing the Triton method just because I can put some of it on dosing pumps and like- All of it, the, all of it. Yeah, I mean it all, man. All I, all I have yeah. to do is ask somebody, hey, can you, like, can you take that five gallon bucket and switch the pump into it? Yeah. You know yep, I mean? that, that's, that's, that's exactly. That, 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 Mm -hmm. And it, yeah, like I was talking to Nick about it, and he was saying, like, um, well, you have to test, you know, you have to make adjustments. And I'm sure that's right, you know, but like we're saying, at this point, we're competing for like a small percentage of an advantage. Mm -hmm. So it's like, even if I'm gone for a month or so, as long as like my calc and stuff is proper, test my tank and then make the adjustments at that point. I'm going to use four of the four of these bottles. So these are 1,000 milliliters each. Oh, oh you can't hear you, Seymour. You went super quiet. Uh, yeah. Am I muted? You lost there. you. You're, you're back. Okay. No. All right. So I was going to say, yeah. So I if Triton is basically four of these 1,000 milliliter bottles. Mm -hmm. They're concentrated. 
And, you know, I got back about three or four shelves because I had to store like the BRS dry supplements, zeolite rocks, you know, um, mm. you know, the, the, the containers to mix them in, the containers to store them in. So I got back. It's a lot, you know, um, the stuff that I gave to TMG, like he filled half of his trunk with the stuff, you know, like the BRS2 part that I needed to kind of mix up. So mm. I am... He, your icp test when you get a chance uh i was hearing you talk about it earlier but uh i was at work so i couldn't actually view it all right let, let us see again so reef dudes kind of help me with this so you go to triton all do right. you want do you want to want to know what you can do is share? you can download that file and you can actually send it to me over email if you want all right let me see let me let me log in first and see what i got All right, so let me figure out how to do this screen share. Seymour, so how much are those four big one liter bottles and how long would that last you? $52. $52. Each or for uh, all four? And, oh yeah, $52 and it's supposed to, by my estimate, even though I haven't started using the system yet, I'll probably go through it in five or six months. Okay, no, that's $56, $52 for all four or each bottle? All four. Okay. All four. Oh, five to six months. That's not bad. Okay. Whoa, for all f are you? S no, no, no way. Yeah, for all four, fifty-two yeah. bucks. Ball three supplies got him. Try it. Yeah. So I did, you know, the other day on Rico stream. Mm-hmm. It's blowing my mind right now. I'm sorry, oh, that's like less than huh. my box of salt. The yeah, other huh. day on Rico exactly. Stream, the other day on Rico stream, we went through how much it would cost Zeovit versus. Triton mm -hmm. and Zeovit is, you know, you so, only got to pay a hundred dollars for a DP4 doser, yeah. I will, uh, yeah. Well, doser, and you're set. Well, you needed a doser yeah. anyway, and I had the, the, the apex dose, so let's not count the, 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 the doser because you needed to dose two part with 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 Zeovit anyway. So for the zeolite, zeo, zeolite reactor was a 200 bucks i bought a crappy one from skins but it was still 200 bucks mm -hmm. you needed um zeolite rocks which i paid 12 bucks and i replaced them about every two months so 12 bucks every two months so 12 bucks times six then you needed man um the little tablets i told you about i, I think it came up to a thousand bucks a year a thousand bucks to start up and run zeovit for a year versus you know, let's say I did, I counted that I did, I replaced my Triton twice a year, and let's say I did four tests a year, that's still 300 bucks. So it's still, you know, I'm saying I do uh, four tests a year, which are 50 bucks each, yep. and then, you know, replace the bottles two times a year, that's 300 bucks versus a thousand bucks. Yeah, it's a lot cheaper then. And what size is so, your yep. tank, Seymour? 75, I think 91 gallons total. Okay. And it's my my tank is, you know, when I say overstocked, my tank is like people say overstocked, but you know, I think I have like fifteen or sixteen fish in there. Mm -hmm. I uh, think. So yeah. So are you guys seeing this? Yep. I don't remember where uh, where it told me where what all the uh, what all the things mean. Yeah. Um. I let's man. I don't. To be honest, oh, I don't it? know. Detect action. Um, so let's go. Okay. Yeah, let's go to the detect where it's telling me. So he says, I, we have detected a lack of potassium, which is, I know that because Zeovit, they say your tank is almost always potassium depleted. So periodically, I would have to dose potassium for, um, for Zeovit. So I know. Magnesium. I usually only dose magnesium when I, um, you know, when I, when I, I, when I finish like a gallon of BRS2 part, then I put two and a half cups of magnesium. So the fact that I'm three quarters of a way through a jug, maybe that's why it's a little bit low, mm -hmm. but low, um, Triton recommends it's at 1370. Mine is at 1300 or 1310. So they say it's low, but it's not that low. Um, iodine, I've never dosed iodine before. I don't know what that is. Um, You've detected a lack of boron. Uh, again, some of these, some of these elements, I bunch of stuff that uh, acros eat up. Yeah, 
Molly Butter. Molly Butter. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Vanadium. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lithium. Mm hmm. Manganese. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, and you know, these are some stuff you can fine tune. We detected a lack of zinc. Yeah, so you know, um, yeah, so some of this, I mean, I really haven't had a chance to go through this stuff, um, but you can see most of the lines are green. Some of I them, like the metals. Yeah, some of them are warnings. But like I said, I think the zeolite rocks have some form of metals in them. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so far you can see where it gets down here. I don't know what the BA group is, but whatever this is, I'm in the warning level. I think it's barium. Yeah, okay. But nutrient group, which is phosphates, one of them is inorganic, one is the organic phosphates. You can see I'm red on both of them. So whatever. Barium. Yeah. yeah I'm barium. supposed to be at six. I'm at 50. Yeah, so both of these types of phosphates, I am way off, so... Gotta fix that. Um, so I can send you, I can download, I guess I could download this PDF and send it. Um, so I will download it and send it to you. Um, I'll save it somewhere. And I'll save it somewhere and send it. Silicon, silicon is SI. SI? Yep, yeah. SI, the one that you have is up, way up too above, uh, Phosphates there, silicon. Yeah, so I got the I got the notification today, so I haven't had a chance to look at what a lot of these are. What a lot of these it's basically a metal. Yeah. That's kind of interesting is, to see that though. What is your email address? Can you post it in the chat and I'll just send it to you? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, it's definitely interesting to see that. So on my to do list one day, I'm curious to see what's all in there. I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm gonna post it in uh, the Hangouts here. Okay. Yeah. Then you guys want to send something to me? Sounds good. That's a pretty sweet email, huh? Oh, I didn't see it. I'll take a look at it. <laughs> Have you done ICP tests before? Yeah, I got ICP test. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh basically the other the, the other day I was showing everybody uh I was showing them my first ICP test I ever took. I was showing them like the problems and how the how the how it works and mm -hmm. what you're supposed to do with Triton is you know like send them in dose a little bit so then that way your actual Triton elements keeps everything else stable, you know? Mm -hmm. So like you're only changing one little trace element you're basically boosting it up in level so then so then the core seven will keep it you know everything stable you know straight mm -hmm. you get what i'm saying so those four one liter bottles that you're dosing is that like calcium elk or is that trace elements like what all is that exactly because you're saying you didn't have uh, to dose your regular stuff anymore right no so, you don't it's calcium uh, from what i know it's calcium alkalinity magnesium and Yep. So it's basically like everything. Okay. Everything that, everything across the board. And that's only a one liter bottle, and you said the last six which, months. Because I'm just like I'm which, just trying to think. Because uh, with regular two part, I mean, one liter doesn't last that long. Yeah, I know. So I spoke, to, I spoke to, like I said, I'm estimating I could be wrong or way off. Mm -hmm. But after explaining and showing videos of my tank to Joe from Unique Corals. He recommends I start with two milliliters each bottle per day. Yeah. He said I'll go up to four. I'll probably go up to four or five. So, I that's what I'm basing my my estimate, my rough estimates off. But it could be more. So, so uh, Paul, uh, I think he told me yesterday or the day before that he's dosing like ten milliliters a day. Mm -hmm. Which, if which there is 1,000 milliliters in that bottle. So if he's dosing 10 milliliters a day, those bottles should last him 100 days, which is three months, mm -hmm. three months and 10 days. What size tank does he have? Uh, I think he has, I think it's a 46 gallon. 
46. I, I, uh, I think. Mm, that's a lot too. I know they sell them in huge. How, how big is how big is your tank? 75. Oh, 75. So I know they sell them in, in a, you can get them in a big quantity, which costs a lot of front, but you basically get two and a half of these bottles free. So they sell them in like this big, you know, get four gigantic jugs or four gigantic containers. Mm -hmm. But when I worked it out, worked out the price, you get two and a half of these bottles. So I think that's the size that I'm going to, I've already told my, you know, my Nat Aquariums to get that size for me. So that's the size I'm going to go with. That, nice. I think that's the best value for money. But I didn't know it was going to be so much. That's not going to determine because I think the no water changes is still worth it my opinion so mm -hmm. um yeah i didn't know it was that much but um we will see if dudes you will, next week you'll get an update excellent I ex i'll be waiting for it yeah. i'm really curious because i know like yeah. i i felt my gallon of stuff and every month or two months whatever it is for my gallon of calcium milk so to me i feel like you need to do so much more unless it's somehow like hyper concentrated but yeah, it, I think in the past it came concentrated, but um, mm. this in the past you had to dilute it. But I think they made it. Um, I got this. Did you did you see my new doser? Um, the coral box. Ah, I did not. You got the coral box. Nice. Yeah, I kind of want to see that. Look at the size of the thing. It's like the size of my iPhone. It's tiny. Like, yeah, four heads. Huh. Um, I, I I wanted to get the Wi-Fi version because mm -hmm. it's going to be tight fit in the tank and I didn't want to take it out every time I'm going to reprogram it. Yeah, it's tiny. But yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's like the size of, it's it's a little bit bigger than my iPhone. Which, oh, yeah, that yeah. thing is small. Well, even yeah, like so. the the Dave, uh, sorry, the Javo DP4 or whatever, if you take it apart, I mean, half is just empty space. Like, it doesn't even need to be that big. Right. This huh. is my iPhone 7. So, this is... The thing in front of my iPhone. Oh my god, that's super duper small. Yeah. yeah. I like so how tiny it is. Was. Does it does it have a timer on it or you set it up yourself? Everything is Wi Fi. You set it up through Wi Fi. There's an app. Okay. okay. Nice. That's cool. Yeah, so there's an app. So small, yeah. It's really cool. So you it has its own Wi Fi network and then you connect you can connect it mm -hmm. to your own Wi Fi network and yeah, this is um, if you're having issues with it, it has a nice Wi-Fi reset button. So <laughs> nice. you know you can you just reset the Wi-Fi, reset the network settings to reconnect to it. Mm -hmm. um, this is, you know, I'm glad I went with this. It, it's about a, uh, it's about eighty dollars more than the straight Javo version, but it's mm -hmm. definitely worth it. Okay. Well, I haven't started using it yet, but based on the size, <laughs> I want an, um, I want an update on that one too later. <laughs> That thing is nice, man. That, that, that looks cool. Super duper small. What is what is what is that light on the side? Um, that is just that is the power. But oh, that's the power a, button. That's the power the place to plug the power cable in, mm, and yeah. then this is the button where if you're having trouble connecting to it, you can reset. you can hit this button to reset the network settings. Oh yeah 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 I got you. Yeah okay. so you can, yeah you just press this and it'll reset to default Wi-Fi. You connect to it and it's not gonna erase your your doser settings, but it'll reset the network settings. When are okay. you uh, putting that Triton on your system? Um, probably. Well, I was gonna do it today until my chalice has died. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, so probably another couple of days. Uh, cool. Pro you know, and probably probably you know, we'll see how I feel when I get up. Oh, are you though. gonna set up some separate bottles for it, or are you gonna use the ones they sent you? No, I am. I have. A, I have a couple of those um, the containers. Some oh, of those, yeah. You know the BRS on. Um, yeah. You know, BRS. Yeah. yeah the, the little cap. No, no. What BRS? Um, you can make your own dosing containers with like this little bulkhead. Yeah. From BRS. So I'm okay. gonna basically roll the top of these containers and just make um, like just just use a bulkhead in the lid. Yeah, make a bulkhead. Use a lid, make a bulkhead, and stick them right in the stand. I already measured, and it works, and it fits. Let me show you where my two part, and it fits. All four bottles will fit right in there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Nice. And 
that's going to be my Triton. And you're gonna set that dose pump up for something else? What you gonna set that up with? Uh, that dose pump is probably gonna go into storage. <laughs> you bought it to go store it? <laughs> Man, I got it cheap, so you know, that's one of those going out of my leaving the hobby sales, I got it. I got two. Wait, wait, wait. So, which one, which one's going to storage? No, I said I'm probably gonna store it. Okay. Are you talking? Sell it to me. Yeah, me too. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm actually working on. I might get a second Apex dose or some credit trades in the f near future. We'll see. You can sell it to Reef dudes over me. He takes first priority. Uh, it's all good. Oh, okay. I already have another one in the works for automatic water changes and other future projects. Nothing has its own Wi-Fi. It's not a router. Can be an access down. point. Yeah, and no, it has its own Wi-Fi signal, Christopher. It um, it's not a router, but it's an access point, so it can do its own Wi-Fi signal. You just open your phone, whatever, you connect to that Wi-Fi, and you can program it that way. It's the same thing. You, yeah. Um, you yeah. I think a lot of devices work like like for instance, a ReefLink works like that. So you open the ReefLink, is that it, it's it has its own Wi-Fi network, mm -hmm. and then you can. You know, there's a configuration there that you can say, hey, instead of having me connect directly to the replay, just have it sync up with my home network. So I can, you know, so it can, um, it can you know, connect to the internet through my home network, and mm -hmm. I can connect to it that way, instead of the wired plug. So I think it's along the same lines. Yeah. Infamous, you all right over there, man? <laughs> yeah, man. Just, uh, just working. What is, what, what is, it? what's on that board there? No, so, 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 I am asking if your Apex doesn't have a Wi-Fi connection. Your Apex, my Apex has Wi-Fi and wired. And if your internet All is right, down, we can't you, see can, it. it's blurred. you can still connect to your Apex through the local network. Mm -hmm. this, this is and that's why, this is masterpiece. No, this is my life. So all this is the videos I have to get done. These are the updates. This is my real estate to-do list for my clients. Then I have like reminders, like dates and stuff. Like my brother's having a baby around the 22nd. And then real estate to-do list, infamous aquatics to-do list, and things I need to like, personal things I need to take care of. So you're in the real estate business or do you like what do you actually do for for a living? Are you in the real estate business, or are you like a help out, or you know, like I'm just yeah. trying to see like what you do, you know? <laughs> I'm a I'm a realtor, apartment locator. My family's into construction. We do vacation rentals. Um, yeah, mostly. I'm really like falling in love with videography. So Entrepreneur, getting... huh? Yeah. You make all this money. Yeah. My man. One thing you'll know, just because you're an entrepreneur, don't make you make all this money. <laughs> just makes you, just <laughs> makes you motivated. <laughs> uh, it's just, man, you got to be motivated. It's tough sometimes. Well, man, do what you do, man. Yep. Keep up the good work. Appreciate you, man. Christopher Seymour is asking, what's the doser called? Coral Box? What was the model of it? Coral Box... Oral box Wi-Fi WFO4. Okay, thank you. I got it from Reef Reef Builders. No Reef. Oh man, I can't remember all these Reef. Yes. Reef. So this has an accuracy of 0.01. That's pretty good. 0.1 of a mil. Nice. Yeah, the guys are just a couple state over for me. So, can nice. you hear me? Yep. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, so the guys are in like Rhode Island, so I got it within a day. Oh, nice. That's all right. Yes, point hey, one of a mil. That's pretty accuracy. Yeah, that Jable pump I bought, the small one, I mm -hmm. finally hooked it up yesterday. It didn't come with a US adapter. Oh. So you set it up with your Wi-Fi, and it still works when your Wi-Fi is down. Or if it doesn't have any connection, yes, it probably keeps its own program inside of it. Yep. Which isn't hard to do. No. Yeah. That's what your radions do. Your radions don't actually connect to your reef link all the time to get programming. 
it saves it to the Radeon, and then you can take the Reef Link offline and, you know, yep. do whatever you need to do. Yeah. Um, Christopher was saying when his internet goes down, he can't connect to his Apex. Um, your Apex also has a local IP address. So if you go on your router and you look at all your connected devices, there'll be something called Apex. And if you know that IP address, as you can type that in, connect directly to it. Usually, if you type in apex.local in your browser, you can get to it. Sometimes it doesn't work, but yeah, if you go to your phone and your phone is connected to your home network, you turn off. You yeah, you like put on airplane mode and then turn back on the Wi-Fi, connect to Wi-Fi, and type mm -hmm. in apex.local. You should be able to get to your local Apex. Huh. 2016 Apex also has a little mini button on the bottom. You can press and it'll turn blue, which means it is sending out its own Wi-Fi signal, and you mm -hmm. can connect to it with your phone. Good to see. Didn't even know, man. Me neither. I just set up what uh, yeah, I had, the other day too. Yeah, uh, I had a, I had a pretty much a uh, dumb guy syndrome. Yeah. I uh. I was trying to use my Apex, and when I first set it up, it kept going, and it would turn orange, mm -hmm. and it would kick my phone off. And I didn't understand that, hey, okay, now it's hooked up to Apex Fusion, now I can access it another way. I just kept, I'm like, well, my phone's supposed to work, so I'd reset it, you know? Mm -hmm. Eventually, I was just like, well, Apex Fusion, well, here we go, and it worked. Nice. Oh, that's good to know. It's kind of like one of those buttons on the websites where you don't know it's a button, yeah. but it says click here, and the actual click here is the place you click. <laughs> nice. Yeah. One of those. That 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 really gets me every now and then. So Pete's asking, what does everybody use for a return pump? So I've used many, many different jables over the years. They're always my go-to, and most recently, as in a few months ago, was a, a splurge for the Vectra M1 because it was on sale for super cheap. Vectra M1, but I am not happy that it won't connect to the Apex. Me I'm neither. J Bowl twelve thousand. Yeah. Probably going to fifteen thousand or twenty-one thousand or something here soon. Nice. I need a bigger one. There, are the new J Bowls. The DCP, I think it is. I have to look, but supposedly I think they're kind of more of a knockoff vector type of style one. They're supposed to be quieter than the old ones, but I don't know. I haven't actually tried to receive them yet. But I, yeah, I've been super happy with my Vectra. But yes, I do wish that it had the Apex WXM compatibility. It's kind of sucked that that whatever happened with their relationship buggered that up. But what you did, and I gotta redo it. You have a you do you have the flow monitoring kit because. I'm just surprised by the how little flow, you know, if the flow monitoring kit is accurate. You know, it turns out mm -hmm. with my manifold, I'm mm -hmm. only getting, at 100%, I'm getting 330 to the display tank and 100 to the refugium and 100 to the macroalgae reactor. So probably, you know, I can't believe there's so much head loss with, um, What's you know, and I, I'm three quarter. Yeah. Probably got to go bigger to get more flow. Yep. Mm. Yeah. I think I read some that, you know, to get the full 2,000 gallon, you have to get a separate kit and get an even bigger than one inch pipe. Oh, really? Uh, I'm using a uh, one and a half. Yeah. On the 12,000. To, to get, yeah. you know, full, full. Well, yeah, the smaller pipe will give you more pressure, so probably more height, I'm guessing, but you're not going to get as much yeah. volume through it. Because, I mean, it's a one-inch inlet, so I think you'd want a one-inch outlet, ideally, to keep it, like, flowing, keep it all even. But I think yeah. the stock one is three-quarter. At least that's what I have on mine right now. Yeah, three-quarter is stock, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's what they send with it, three-quarter, yep. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Your I, manifold... Manifold plumbing is three quarters, right? Yeah, my so I don't have the manifold running off my Vectra. I have my old one of my old Jabo pumps running my manifold separately. And the reason I did that is because I didn't I have the B animal style overflow, and I didn't want any reactors clogging or any of that stuff messing with the flow and then making my overflow get loud. Because my whole goal is to keep that tank like dead quiet. Yeah, I had a pro with anyone with the red sea tanks. 
Mm -hmm. anyone who's having trouble tuning the overflow i ended up just replacing the valve with my own valve because i just couldn't keep it tuned so i went to brs and um let me line up a shot here yeah so i went to brs mm -hmm. and bought um so you can see there that's not the stock oh you put a you know, return gate valve on it yeah yeah gate valve on it which yeah because this the thing would lose two and like i would have to retune it every day and I mm -hmm. thought it was because I had a manifold on it, but it turns out just a Red Sea manifold, stock manifold sucks. Ah, good to know. So anyone who has the Red Sea <laughs> Red Sea tanks and you're having trouble keeping, you know, the thing calibrated, yeah. It's worth swapping it, really it out. Does. Yeah, it's it sucks, yeah. You have to get a part from Red Sea, but then you can do whatever plumbing you want. So do they have a special size pipe? You can't just use regular plumbing. No, they they use this metric fitting. So you they you just have to get one fitting from them that turns you know like whatever piping they have to a one inch, and then you could do whatever you want. Okay, that's good to know. That's for the that's for the overflow. Mm -hmm. That's for the return return line. The line that goes to the tank. It's it comes with its own um threaded that takes three quarters so you're okay. fine there but if you want your your valve you'll need to get i think it's like 10 bucks from, from red sea well, at least that's not bad but it was worth it yeah it was worth it because yeah the, the valve wouldn't keep it was terrible yeah it looks like you have the same gate valve that i have on mine and that thing works really well so yeah that's the brs um spears uh yeah mine spears same brand yeah, but it's it yeah. super fine adjustments, which is nice. It's in tune it in perfectly. Excellent. I haven't had to readjust only because I've changed, you know, things. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I, you know, I think at one time I had carbon. Like, do not put carbon on your manifold because when carbon clogs, it's gonna affect, you know, flow. So I learned that lesson. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the uh, DCP fifteen thousand is one hundred and forty-five bucks. It really is hard to beat for the price. Uh, that's that's what I was shipping. I guess I'd probably get a probably a hundred and seventy-five. Still lots of flow though. Like it's still awesome pumps. Oh yeah, I've used. I've I've been using my I've been using my Jable for six years now. Yeah, five yeah. five years. Yeah, the one feeding oh. my manifolds was from my thirty gallon interview retake ad like years ago. So it still goes I've strong. Never had I've never had one fail on me. I know I've given it to people, and they've had it fail within a few months. Mm -hmm. But personally, I've used a bunch of Jago pumps, and I've never had one nope. fail on. Yeah. Uh, my my wave makers finally crashed after like three years. But I've never used the wave maker. Did you did 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 you clean them? Yeah. Yeah. Every All six right. months. Every six All right. Uh, somebody's gonna flame me, but I have a RW15 that uh, one of my buddies bought for me for thirty bucks. Mm -hmm. Three years running, never cleaned, still works. So the secret my, uh, my Jable uh, twelve thousand never cleaned it, still runs. Five years later. <laughs> yeah, I think it's one of those things, right? It's just. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't with the China stuff. Keep like, that yeah. slime coat up. So the only issue we've had so far mm -hmm. with Jabo stuff is my CP40, the original Gen 1. It, um, it, uh, in one mode, only in the pulse mode, it would stop working. Once the time, it just wouldn't start back up. Every other mode worked fine, wasn't an issue, except for that one. So they ended up replacing the pump, same thing happened. So apparently there's the controller, and they replaced the controller, and eventually that fixed it. But at the end of the day, I got a second pump out of the deal, said by magnets. But yeah, so that's the only thing. All other Jable stuff I've had has been pretty solid for me. Yeah, I like the Mona fan, to be honest. It's hard It's hard not to be for the price. Yeah, it's true. It's just one of those things, like a trade-off, like you buy it knowing you might have to replace it. But, I mean, the other field of view is you could buy, like, two or three of them for the price of some other brand, so if you do replace it, you're still cheaper. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Getting it, right? yeah it, it's a trade-off, right? Often, mm -hmm. you, how often pumps are trading or changing, is, you're probably going to 
to get a new one in three years anyway. Yeah. So it's yep. like, even if J Valve, you have to replace it every year, you still end up maybe a little bit ahead. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just that trade off. I don't I know. My favorite, my favorite pumps of all time were Tunzi because you don't clean them and they still work. And you can aim them. I know MP10s, you know, you just you can't aim them. My gyres that I use now, they, I haven't cleaned them in two months, and I can tell. Like, um, not even two months. Yeah, two months. So you remember when 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 we were on CJ's stream, and CJ was kind of giving the settings on how to create the wave with the gyres? Yeah. So that night, that same night, I set it to create a wave. I, I don't know if that was five weeks ago or four, a month ago. Mm -hmm. My pumps are now dirty. They're not even created on wave anymore. So that's how much the performance drops with the gyre if you don't clean them. It's noticeable. While yeah. with a clumsy or a MP40, like that thing will be covered in coralline algae and still pulsing, still working. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so so that's even noticeable that you know a month ago it was creating a standing wave. Today it can't. And when I put them in 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 um in in some vinegar tomorrow and clean them, I'm gonna get a standing wave. <laughs> I've had, um, oddly I've had the two MP40s in my tank, I, one of them I took off to clean it and haven't bothered putting it back on like a week. But there's one on one side and the J-Bone is creating this crazy rocking motion in the tank. It's actually, it's like literally like a quarter inch from the top, but it's perfect right now. So, Christopher was just saying he got an MP10, but the tank's too thick. Um, oddly what I did on mine, it, it like barely holds and every once in a while, if it changed modes too quickly, like the part would fall off because I'm thicker than what it recommends so I end up doing a little bead of hot glue on the outside of the MP40 because it's all hidden by overflow anyway so I don't really care but that was enough to just hold it in place then everything worked because I'm pushing it for thickness on my tank um it's Chris you have a gyre it sucks I actually really like my gyre um I've yeah, had I I've yeah like whenever I clean like the MP40s I've left just the gyre on my tank for a couple weeks and it's done a good job on it so I don't know. I like having the mix of pumps because I think they kind of complement each other in a way. But I like the gyre. I, I have the second generation. The first generation actually, you know, you they they broke easy. Mm -hmm. The the ice cap three K, while you can sync two pumps together, I really love that pump. Because it's it's even easier to take apart and clean than the gyre itself. I don't know how long it lasts, mm -hmm. but and you just remove the cages, the the um, the whatever you call it, the propeller is a little interesting. It's easy to remove, easy to clean. The thing about the gyres is when you take them apart to clean them, like you have to be careful putting them together properly. Mm -hmm. But the yeah. ice cap three is really easy to put together. So if someone's looking for a budget, um, I used one for three months and now someone else is using it. So. Uh, I have Kevin VNH ENH vlogs is using yeah. it, so you know give us a review in a couple of months on. But I used it for three months. What is he using? Mm -hmm. um, Ice cap three K gyre. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it works. It it works well. I like it. How do you have? You, did you use the Jable one? No, the Ice cap. Ice yeah. Cap oh no, no. I know you're talking about the Jable. I'm just curious if you use the Jable one and how it compares. No the crossover. Yeah. Couldn't get yeah. one. Yeah, okay, because I have the Jabo CP40 is what I'm using. I'm just. That's curious. what you're using on your tank. Yeah, I got two MP40s and a CP40. Lots of 40s. I thought gyre. I thought that was a gyre. No, it's uh, well, a well Jabo gyre. They're knockoff, but yeah, CP40. They're pretty similar. Oh uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So isn't uh, that the ice cap like it's just a cheaper version from gyre, right? From Maxpack. Yeah, that's what it is. But I, I think what's happening is it's probably cannibalizing sales. But I mm -hmm. think, you know, I think people, I like, I like it. I would recommend it to anyone. Yeah. Um, it just doesn't come with the extra cages. It doesn't come with. Um, you need to buy something if you want to do reverse gyre. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, I mean, I don't run my pumps in reverse ever. I do standing wave and have them change modes. You know a little bit throughout the day but if you don't want to do reverse gyre or if you need a supplement pump to like supplement from some flow some dead spots yeah it's a option i was debating i haven't actually tried doing it 
in reverse. But I was debating it just for the sake of seeing if it would suck, you know, all the little bits of stuff. From, the one thing I noticed with bubbling is you do get a bit of a protein layer building up on the surface of your water. And because my tank, how it is, a lot of it, it collects more at the far end because all of my pumps are on the overflow wall. So I was debating trying to run it reverse once in a while just to see if it would suck everything off the top and kind of clean the surface. Nah, the reverse mode is re a lot weaker than the yeah. forward mode. So I don't think, yeah, it's like half the power. If you run, you know, for regular mode at 100% and mm -hmm. then you run reverse at 100%, it's going to have a lot less effect. It's only going to have an effect in the localized area. It's okay. gonna blow up a lot of detritus in that area, believe me. Yeah. Because it's yeah, it's gonna blow up a lot of crap in that area, but mm -hmm. it's not going to reach the end of your tank. Yeah, okay. but nothing can run in reverse. I mean, like as well. Yeah. Even your cars can only go like fifteen miles in reverse before your transmission is squealing, you know? Yeah, that's fair. But yeah, you know what actually I'm gonna set up a profile that's gonna run in reverse tonight. I'll see what happens. I'll, I'll set it up. Okay, perfect. The program the giant. Let me know. The controller is a pain in the butt. You have to be kind of careful with that because when you run your gyre in reverse, it basically is forced to blow most of the water at basically directly at your corals. Mm -hmm. So, and you might might get some pissed off corals by doing that i don't want to give no advice but hey, i'll set it up so maybe late in the night when they're all you know at sleep away when they're all polished up the wind and i'll set it to run reverse for maybe 15 minutes or half an hour whatever the minimum is i'll yeah. check it and see yeah i'll let you know um, what happens but mine are silent i've heard i've seen some forum posts that says when you run it in reverse you hear some slight noise so I'll let you know tomorrow what happens. I'm gonna I'm gonna program it to run a little bit in reverse guide. Okay, sounds good. They have um Aqualink A1 is a module they made now. Like you can hook up the Jabo some of the Jabo stuff, like the newer Jabo pumps and the CP forties to the Apex. So I haven't got one yet, but I was debating it just for the whole sake of being able to run reverse and program it more rather than just being just straight up pulse mode, which I leave it on normally. So I'm curious yeah. to hear what you come up with from yours to see. Here's something I was thinking about was I was thinking about getting like, I don't know, six like RW4s mm -hmm. and like spreading those out through my tank and putting all those little pumps on my tank, just doing like random flow or pulse. Yep. And just see if like, you know, just all that flow mixing up, see if that does anything, you know, see if that Your works tank? better at like, you know, giving my corals random flow and getting detritus out and stuff like that. Yeah. It would be great for random flow because I mean, having them randomly all over the place would start kind of crash the flow into each other and they would spread out different directions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. thinking about that. Definitely doesn't hurt to have lots of flow. It's good to K. One thing on that because I know I saw this earlier in the chat. Someone's talking about basically too much flow or blasting corals, which too much flow on corals directly can be a bad thing, right? If you're blasting it, you literally could blast the flesh off if it's too much flow. The coral can't handle it. Like, it's good to have lots of flow as a volume, but just not as like a single laser beam of flow. Yeah, not directly onto the skin of the coral. Mm -hmm. And if it is powerful pumps too, you know, sometimes you can bounce it off the glass and then let it come back and it softens it and different things. Like, you just want to make sure you're not destroying your corals with too much flow. Spreads it out for sure, you know? No, exactly. So after hearing Jake speak earlier i don't think i'm gonna do no ozone for i think you? i'm gonna try okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try bubbling before i do ozone hey bu bubbling is cheap for 20 bucks you can try it i mean it's that one i think you might as well yeah, on, honestly I'm try the only I'm reason i did this the lead. yeah you take the lead on like look probably at, try it for cheaper than 20. yeah looking at brs that if you got an air pump yeah it's like five dollars from there so uh, like BRS no sites, like their ozone generator is like a couple hundred bucks. Like I never had a chance. This thing, I think I got it for like forty-five bucks. So it's cheap enough that I figured it's worth a, a whirl to see. I'm still curious. I, who knows if I'll save the long term, but I'm gonna at least try it for a few weeks and see what happens. And... Yeah, well, you know, let me know. I, I'm gonna try bubbling. Mm -hmm. I have some BRS points. Yep. So I'm gonna use my points and get um some uh, air pump for the air pumps. And I 
went with that little A-pump, I definitely recommend that one. It's What's the A-pump? Here, let me find it. It was, it was like 20 bucks on Amazon. It's tiny, it, basically the size of a suction cup, and it's silent. All right, so the fact that I have a manifold, does that affect, because that means I'm going to be putting bubbles back into, your into reactors? my... Uh, into my Chato reactor, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be putting bubbles into my refugium. Chato reactor is going to love it. Oh, yeah. Well, All you're uh, doing is just throw some carbon dioxide. As long as, hey, that's good. And as long as the um, copepods pods aren't pissed off, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, Copa pods don't care about bubbles. Yeah. Seymour, if you can see the YouTube right now, they're like 17, 20 bucks for these little guys. They're super tiny and silent, so they work really well. Where do you uh, at? Wait, I can't see. Wait, where's the link? Uh, here, I'll drop it in the chat. But yeah, they work really well for. They're just tiny little silent pumps. There. Oh, I got it! I got it! Got yeah. it! Oh yeah, they are. Yeah, super tiny, and yeah, for me, just they're quiet. You don't even know it's strong. Like the bubble, you hear the I'm bubbles in the water more. The 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 fizz from the micro bubbles is a lot of. That work. Nope. And you use the two two channel one, right? No, two I just use, I use the single one channel. Um, I don't know if it's out in there. Is a pump? Is that brand? I don't know if they have the single one on there. It's, it's black, yeah, it right? Does. Yeah. One channel, one hundred and ten oh, volts. There two channels, one hundred and ten yeah, volts. There you go. So eighteen bucks. You use, you use one channel. Yep. That and a wooden air stove. That's all you need. All right. All right. I'm down. Yeah, it's cheap. I'm cheap down. enough not to try. <laughs> Make them spend that money. Yep. I will Just swipe here. I will. <laughs> I, am, I am down to try. You know. Mm -hmm. I, enough people have tried it where I know it's not gonna kill my tank. Oh no, no. I need. I need to try all this stuff. For my dream build in a year or so, man. So I need to. Mm -hmm. I need to know if all this stuff works. So, you know. So. When the dream when it's not dream yeah. build. The things that I noticed from it, the um, I would say a subtle slight pH boost, not huge, but a little bit of a boost on pH. The corals, it helps get rid of more of the slime coat and stuff, and it also made the water a bit clearer, because it essentially it turns your tank into like a big skimmer, because you're making all these little tiny micro bubbles that will attach to little bits in the water, and it'll rise to the surface, and then it'll get fed out through your overflow or whatever else. So, I mean, it's not any, like any, night and day differences, but those are like the little things that I've noticed from doing it. And no, any, any salt spray, salt creep, salt spray? I'm doing it in my return pump chamber, so there's still like tons of room above it, so that, that hasn't been an issue for me. Most people, they'll put it, if your last baffle has a hole underneath, most people put the wooden airstone kind of just inside of it so that the big bubbles rise up and the little ones will go into the next one. On my scent, the last bubble or the last baffle it flows over top into the bottom. So what I did is I put a, a small power head in the back of corner of my sump. I got a video on it if you want to watch it, but I have a small power head in the back and I put the air stone right beside it. So the big bubbles still go up, but the little tiny ones get sucked into the nano power head and blow and circulate around my sump until they get sucked into the turn pump. All right. And that also double duties for my automatic feeder that's in the sump. So it, it keeps the food suspended until it gets sucked into the pump. Uh, is that the same? I remember that auto feeder video. Is yep. that the same video? Uh, no, it's a different video. But all right, my pump kind of double duties for both of those. All right, so I will. Um, Here, I'll drop I the will, link for it later. I will check it out. Oh, sounds good. Yeah, I'll uh, definitely check it out. It's cheap. All bad. right, guys, I gotta get going. Sounds good. I gotta do the same in a little bit. Hopefully, uh, all you guys enjoy reefing and take it easy. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Sounds good. You as well. No problem. There. There you go. I dropped that link in the YouTube chat if you want to check her out later. I'm supposed to go for wings right. a little bit, so probably go a little bit more on me than I'll have to head her. Uh, so, oh, Christopher. Okay, so Christopher is asking. Now, what Triton needs to do is start using Wi-Fi toasters. <laughs> Buy it and fill the jugs. <laughs> Keep your tank in check. <laughs> what they really need is a freaking alkalinity probe. So that I can just say, yep, this is where you're at. This is what you need. Dose done. That'd be like the holy grail. I know they have their that other one that does that Triton test, but I still think one day they'll find a probe that can do it. 
It doesn't require a Triton or, or not Triton, um, Tritation tests. I still have a theory that there's some way to do it with the Spectrum Analyzer. I just need to find one and find time to figure it out. It would be good though. One day, it'd be like the Holy Grail. That, the Kelsalini Probe, everything just auto doses, your tank's like dead perfect. You'd be set. Alright, have a good night, Johnny. I'd pay for that too. I think that'd be awesome. So if any of you guys are extremely techy, Spectrum Analyzers play with him. I think there's potential. Alright guys, I um, have to head out for food soon, so I'm going to shut her down, but thanks everybody who jumped on tonight. Hopefully update next week if I play with the Ozone a bit more. Jake's making me be a little more cautious with it, which is probably for the better. But still curious to play with it and see what kind of results I get. I brought a power meter off a of buddy so I'm gonna see like if there's a difference too from just holding the tank and just find a way of mounting the bottom somewhere and see if there's a difference in power after running it for a few hours. Then I also want to set up a camera and let it record for a little, couple minutes. A few hours turn it back on and see if there's a difference in clarity anything that's noticeable. So a few little tests I want to do but see if it makes a noticeable enough difference to justify it. So hopefully get that done this weekend but otherwise we'll see what happens. Okay. All right, man. All right. Thanks, Seymour. Thanks, Anthony, for jumping on. Thanks, Bubba. Appreciate all you guys hanging out tonight. Uh, I'm just sorry I wasn't more involved, man. That's ah, still good. It's always good to have you. You got a lot of work there, infamous. Yeah. A lot of writing on that board, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's always fun to man. I love talking to you, Seymour. Hey, man. Same here. I, man, I've, I... It's been hard to get work done since I discovered this community like a month ago. <laughs> Dude, look at that's what I'm saying. Look at this. that's why I had to come up with this board. <laughs> like, you can't do it. No, it's like, you're it's like so. It's like I used to so be working, and now you're on live streams. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, you know, I work from home, so mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm just listening to. I used to listen to tech podcasts. Now I listen to live streams all day. Yeah. Yeah, you get yourself a dry race board, man. It saves my life, like no joke. Mm -hmm. I did a random live stream yesterday because Rico wasn't doing one, and I was having live stream withdrawal, man. So <laughs> you joined one or hosted that. one? I saw that, but I was with a client. Oh. Yeah, man, it was it was a, it was live stream. I was like, what the heck is Rico, man? And then and then Reef Community Worldwide wasn't on. I so I was like, man, let me just drop a live stream because it was on. It, these are fun, man. These are fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's another way. It's actually, in my opinion, the best way to build the community. You know, like it's mm -hmm. easy to comment back and reply to comments or comment on videos. But really, what kind of like, how well do you get to know a person and like actually build a relationship mm -hmm. with someone over like one or two comments per video? It's true. Love it. Adds a personal touch. It is fun. All right, Reef dudes, I know you got to go. You're hungry, so oh, I got to go. Oh, it's growing. I'm about to go hit the gym. I was waiting for Reef dudes. Sounds yeah, good. Again. All right, appreciate you all, guys. Thanks for jumping on tonight. Right. Have a good night, everybody. Later. Hey, if you enjoyed that, hit that like button. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, guys. That was fun, man. Yeah.